Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I wanted to go over some one-page cover letter do's and don'ts in this episode. And uh, again, if you need help with your letter of intent, uh, just go to uh, residencyhelp.com and you can find a link uh, to my course or a number of books that will help you. So I want to just start this off with, it's an extremely hard thing to do to get something to a one-page cover letter. And to be honest, most people have it wrong anyway. Most people don't have the right things in there. They're trying to cut and they are still probably missing a lot. Usually what they're missing is it's not about talking about yourself. It's about talking how you match. And that's something that people really, really have a tough time doing. But if you don't have anything in there about them, it's a one-sided conversation. And if you've ever talked to somebody who just talks about themselves... That's boring. No one wants to hear that. So if your letter is just about yourself, I don't care how good you are. No one's going to care. They care that you care about them, that you've read their website, that you've looked at their opportunities, and that you've matched those opportunities to yourself. So if you look at yours or somebody looks at yours and say, hey, is this just about me? The answer is yes, because they're going to say, all right, well, if it's just about you, well, we certainly don't want someone like you here. It needs to be a nice balance of about you, about them, and how you come together. So these are the things you definitely want to cut. Don't talk about gross generalizations about pharmacy and how you're going to save the pharmacy world as a resident. Okay, There's two reasons for this. One, it's not memorable at all. You're totally going to forget, okay, they were going to save something about pharmacy and something about the world. But the other thing is, if they start to get the idea that, oh, wait a minute, is this person not coachable? Is this person not going to start on a learning mindset? Are they thinking they're going to change things around here? That they're the chief? That they're the boss? Okay, that's something you definitely don't want to put on there. And gross generalizations can do that. Second, flattery. Don't say things like, I am honored to apply Oh my gosh, 8,000 people can apply. There is no selection process. Anyone is welcome to apply. Okay, So it just, the more you talk about how great they are, the more you minimize yourself. Okay, When somebody has 200 or 300 people applying for four spots, they, they already get it. They get that they're in demand. They get that somebody wants them. Uh, it's not like you know, certain schools out or certain residency sites out there are going, I hope we get somebody this year. What they're saying is, I hope we get 100 fewer this year so we can make it a lot easier on ourselves. That's what they're saying. Don't cut, do cut generic lines from cover letter templates. I want to express my deep interest. I want to express my interest. Oh my gosh, that's the UCSF or ACCP or ASHP, whatever. Don't use the same first sentence as a template. It just says, I am trying to be unique, but I'm going to start this letter with something completely, completely generic that I actually took from someone else. Filler words. Grammarly is really good for this. I, I don't know. I've got like the super Grammarly, so I don't know how far the free version goes. But when you see it say you have too many filler words in a sentence, it's actually way over. It should actually be a lot less than that. But in, into the, all those types of things are filler words, makes a sentence longer, makes it harder to read. It just, the person reading it's not really going to know why they don't like your letter and why they're having trouble with it, but it's going to be a lot of filler words. And just as you can talk and have, mm, so what I'm trying to say is it sounds the same. So cutting those filler words, you know, using Grammarly. I've seen entire paragraphs trying to fill in that last space, trying to get to a page because they really didn't say much of anything in the letter that says, thank you for letting me apply. If you have any questions, call, text, write. What what are you talking about? Just say, thank you for reading or thank you for letting me apply. One sentence should be no more than five or six words. You should not have three to four sentences on, it would be super great if we could be together. I just want to let you know this is my number. You can call me anytime. You can text me anytime. You can write me anytime. And I'm not trying to be glib. I'm telling you what I'm seeing. And I get what you're doing. You're trying to say, I want to fill a page. And I'm saying, okay, we'll put in something more about how you match. Don't put in, I'm so excited that you're reading this and that you got to the bottom. 
Okay, here's some things to don't do. Don't reduce the font below 11. I've seen 10 and a half. I've seen 10. I've even seen 9. Okay, RPDs generally are going to be older. I'm 48, and it is really hard for me to see anything that's in that font, and I use readers and stuff like that. When you reduce the font below 11, what you're doing is the wrong thing. What you should be doing is cutting the words that are not important and leaving it a larger size. What you shouldn't do is reduce the font to make it almost like a footnote. Second, don't reduce the margin unless it looks right. Sometimes on a CV, it looks really weird to have one inch margins. It's like all the way squished in the middle. However, when you put one inch margins on an LOI, it looks exactly right. But when you start squishing that, that's when it becomes really hard to read because CVs have a lot of space between the paragraphs and the sentences. LOIs don't. All you're doing is making it denser and denser and harder to read. Don't reduce margins uh, below one uh, on an LOI. Uh, reduce spacing between paragraphs and lines. Don't do that either. Yes, you can make it a little bit more squished. Again, the more illegible it is, the more somebody's be like, this is just weird. There's something weird about this. And the entire time they're trying to read it, all they're thinking is, this is weird. This is really weird. Okay. Same thing with the fonts. Don't do anything that makes it harder to read. Don't use weird fonts. You know, you can use Times or uh, Calibri or something like that. But in general, you're probably going to have this read online. So you're going to want to use something that's easier to read online necessarily than something that is uh, something that you would use in print. Okay. And don't try to do this alone. I'm, yes, I help people with their letters of intent. Yes, it makes sense for me to say, help, you know, let me help you. But, you know, if you've got that grammar person in your life, bring them along. But don't try to do it yourself. Just because you're good at critical care or organic chemistry or biochemistry does not mean that you are a writer that can create a letter that has the rhetorical ethos, logos, and pathos that is going to get you through the door to the interview. It's just like anything else. There are experts, and then I'm like an expert within an expert within an expert, which is I'm good at writing. I'm an English major. I'm really good at writing letters, but I am really, really, really good at writing letters of intent because I've done it. Oh my gosh, now we're almost to 500 total. So we are at a point where, you know, I can fix something like that so quickly, so easily. And it just does not make sense for you to try to learn writing to create a single or even 12 or 13 letters. You know, some people hire me to do all of their letters. You know, it's like, hey, I just want to make sure they're all right. Okay. And I catch things like, hey, you spelled the precept or the the preceptor's name wrong, or hey, you spelled the RPD's name wrong, or hey, you said that you're super interested in a rotation that they don't have there. That's fine. You're stressed. You've got a lot going on. Always have a second pair of eyes. So whether it's me or somebody else, you know, figure it out. Uh, but anyway, you know, you can go to my website, uh, residency.teachable.com, and then it's like a forward slash P forward slash extreme LOI. It's a little bit goofy. Or you can do uh, teachable residency.teachable.com, uh, and then you can get to uh, the site. But I'm happy to help you guys. But again, you know, there are some do's and don'ts. And it's just so easy to make these mistakes when you're exhausted, when you're tired, when you're trying to do this during your APPEs. Uh, let somebody else look at it. Let somebody else make sure these mistakes aren't there. And then just show them the list. This is a video presentation. Just show them the list. Hey, is this stuff there? And somebody that knows what they're doing can... It's just so easy for us to do. We're just so accustomed to getting it out. We're, we're so accustomed to, oh, that's a split infinitive. What's a split infinitive? Well, you put the action word, just never mind, you know, just fix it, you know. So let us fix it. Let us do it. Just let us do our jobs. So anyway, I'm going to be taking off for a couple of days here, but uh, do uh, feel free to email me at TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com. And if you want help with the LOI, uh, again, give me a buzz and uh, we'll get started.